is Eric Hiltz with Bin 412, back with our May 2019 Wine of the Month. This month, I'm going to taste her three wines made right here in the state of Pennsylvania that have changed my mind about what Pennsylvania wines could be. Let's jump right in. The first one is from a winery called Silvermark Cellars. Now, Silvermark has a personal story for me because the winemakers and owners of this winery are two neighbors of mine, Jim Chaklowski and Zach Ritz. And I have watched them go from just kind of making wine as a hobby to really kind of doubling down and investing in some higher end equipment, some really nice French oak barrels, buying fruit twice a year in the, in the fall from Susan Valley in California, just east of Napa, and in the spring from Chile, and really upping the quality game quite a bit. This uh, is a Super Tuscan that just came out of barrel. I'm really excited about it. Uh, they've really done a tremendous job, and it's kind of fun for me to see people who are as passionate about wine as I am make it into a business, kind of like I have with Bin 412, and, and, and take it on to, to a new level. Now, make no mistake, though, these guys are doing all, all the hard work and getting their hands dirty. I just get to taste the... Uh, taste the wines in and reap the, the benefit of their hard work. They're the true artisans. But this is a, a new Super Tuscan that was just released. It is 52%, let me check my notes, 52% Sangiovese, 34% Cabernet Sauvignon, 14% Merlot. Aged 18 months in uh, French oak barrels, 50% of which were new, 50% were neutral. Uh, the color here is clearly a Sangio wine. It is a lighter, brickier orange. It's not a deep, dark red or purple by any means, uh, even though there is some Cabernet and some uh, Merlot in there. Yeah, you definitely get the Sangio coming out of here with some tart cherry notes, a little bit of, of balsamic, um, and just a, just a touch of vanilla from that French oak, but a really, really kind of light touch of, of oak here. Very, very pretty. Very complex nose. Mm. Yeah, great purity and elegance on this wine. Really clean. Um, good, well-integrated tannins. Very silky tannins. That French oak, um, you can you can taste it. There's a little bit of that toastiness at the end, uh, but it doesn't cover up the fruit, and the tannins are really fine grained and and kind of kind of caress the tongue. This is this is a really nicely made wine. Again, these guys are making wine in their basements here in my neighborhood and just doing a fantastic job. And every single wine I taste gets better and better. They're really honing in on their sweet spot. Check them out online. Uh, you can buy wine online, and they will find a way to get to you. They do not ship yet, but if you're in the Pittsburgh area, these guys will make sure you get their wine. Really check these guys out every year, every vintage, getting better and better. Can't say enough about what Silvermark is doing right now. Yeah, might be their best wine to date, to be honest. Okay, the next one is also located down this way in uh, Washington, B.A. This is in 84, Pennsylvania, J&D Wine Cellars. It's about 30 miles south of Pittsburgh, named after the founders, John and Dot. John was a home winemaker who started out making sweet wines and then evolved over the years into making some drier wines. He's also sourcing fruit from Susan Valley uh, out in California. Now, if you ever have a chance to be down this way in 84 PA, the winery itself um, is, is a place you can rent out. You can, you can just go and stop in there and have a glass of wine, but you can also rent out the backyard. They have tents and bonfires, and it's a great place to get a lot of friends together, uh, bring your own food, and buy as much wine as you want to drink that night. Uh, it's a really good time. They also have a new location in the Meadows down by the casino there. Uh, and if you follow these guys on Facebook or Instagram, there is something going on there every single night. They literally have something there at all times. So stop in and pay them a visit as well. True family operation had a chance to sit down with Holly McIntosh uh, Dot's daughter and talk shop a little bit and uh, we had a really good conversation and um, she turned me on to a couple wines this is a Petit Syrah uh, really really enjoyed this wine um, I've talked about Petit Syrah in some of my previous videos so I won't bore you with the details on this grape but um, you know this in the Susan Valley if you, if you know the the Wagner family of, of Camus winery fame uh, they've actually started a, a project in Susan Valley and they're making a bottle called Grand Derif Dury, Francois Dury, is the botanist that invented the Petit Syrah grape by crossing uh, Pelorsin and Syrah. And so they're doubling down in this area. So it's just giving you a little indication of, you know, Petit Syrah coming out of the Susan Valley. Definitely something to keep your eye on. Color on this completely different. Dark, dark color. Um, you know, red, almost purplish on the edges. Kind of glass staining color for sure. Yeah, and on the nose, this is much darker, right? So dark, spicy, spicy dark plum, black raspberry, blackberry, very dark fruit driven. Uh, and a little bit spicy too. Like I said, that spicy plum definitely comes through. Mm. Okay, much more tannic than the Sangiovese, as you'd expect. Petit Syrah is very tannic grape, very drying, very dusty, but very balanced, very, very nice wine. The American oak here, I think, adds a little aggressiveness. Uh, this was aged 12 months in American oak, 
Uh, the French oak, I think, gives you a little finer grained tannins, a little bit more kind of silkiness. This is a little more aggressive, a little bit more tannic. If you're uh, not into like a really dry wine, I don't think you'll like this. But if you do like a big, bold red wine that has some dryness to it, this is fantastically balanced and a, and a really nice wine just to drink by itself. I don't even think you need food with this. This is kind of a meal in and of itself. Really nice stuff. If you're in the 84 area, stop by and pay these guys a visit. You can order for them online, and I think they're starting to ship a little bit as well. So definitely check them out and see what they're up to. They're making, like I said, 20 to 25 wines a year. So huge variety, something for everyone. Now, the third wine that I'm doing is from Courtyard Winery. A little different than J&D and, and, uh, and Silvermark in the sense that this is in northeast Pennsylvania, up outside of Erie, and they are growing their own grapes for these wines, not purchasing them from California or Chile. Uh, now, this grape, Noiré, is a... As a, as a uh, a clone, or a, 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 a cross between a Vitis vinifera, a European grape, and a Vitis lambrusca, a set of American grapes that was done at Cornell University through a grape uh, breeding program. And it produces a wine that when I was in the, the, the winery really kind of took me aback, and, 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 and I'll get into it in a second. Uh, but if you have a chance and you're up in Northeast, go pay these guys a visit, um, check out the winery. If you're not, and you are in the Pittsburgh area, in the new PA market in the Strip District, they have a tasting room there, and that's what turned me onto these guys. If nothing else, go in and meet the general manager, Joanne Jeffers, she's a fantastic person. I walked by kind of skeptically, didn't think I was gonna like a Pennsylvania wine, but just seeing her and walking in and talking to her, she's so warm and welcoming and inviting. You just have to go in and pay her a visit and try some of their wines, and trust me, you'll be impressed on If you like the dry wines, you'll be impressed from the the whites and the reds. This wine really kind of took me, took me by surprise. It's Noir, as I mentioned, and um, you know, pretty dark out of the gates here. Kind of a, a, a muddled uh, garnet, not not really purple, but like a, a dark, deep dark red. But the nose on this wine, yeah, it's just if I taste smelled this wine, I would call Northern Rhone in a heartbeat. It's got tremendous crushed black pepper. It is just beaming with crushed black pepper and kind of a dried beef jerky note, uh, an iron, a mineral note, but um, but the black pepper just dominates. Yeah, it's, it's a medium bodied wine. It's not like a really big bruiser like the Petit Syrah, but that pepper note and the dark fruit uh, really are just super unique in the wine world. I think this wine would go great with food. Um, there's a, a, a coffee and black pepper rub from Einar Gartner that I've been making, uh, using on my steaks for years. And I think this, with a grilled steak with that rub, would be absolutely fantastic. Um, really, really unique wine. Definitely check this out. They just also came out with a Terral Dago, which is a red wine from Alto Adige up in northern Italy. That's a very unique grape. I haven't had a chance to get down there and try it, but I'm, I'm excited to. And a Zweigel, which is a, um, an Austrian grape. So these guys are doing some really cool stuff right there in Erie, uh, cooler climate type stuff. Definitely check them out. So there you have it. Those are three wines in Pennsylvania that I've found over the last month that have changed my mind on what can come out of, out of the state of Pennsylvania, whether you're purchasing the grapes or you're growing them right here in the state. Um, so hey, as we say at Ben 412, the world of wine is an enormous place. Here's to expanding your palate, drinking new varietals, drinking new regions. Cheers. Mm -hmm.